Hello guys and welcome to my three step process of how I optimize Google Performance Max campaigns. Now this is a well requested video and this basically just shows exactly what I do and in the agency I work for we sort of do in order to optimize Performance Max campaigns because there's a lot of unknown around Performance Max. You no one really knows exactly what to do. There's no clear instructions from Google yet because it's very, very new. So it's up in the air. So this is from my previous experience of running Performance Max campaigns for I think going on the last two years, literally since they came out, maybe more. Um, and this is just exactly what I like to do. Um, so the first step is we review our asset group performance by using a Google script, which I'll provide to you, or looking at the listing groups. Now this works best for e-commerce. If you don't, if you're running lead gen uh, performance match campaigns, which I recommend, they are quite good, they do work. Um, then this will be a bit less effective for you because with the listing groups, you need to have products in there. So it only really works for e-com brands, just bear that in mind. Okay, so first of all, we want to review our asset group performance because when we know which asset group is performing, we can provide tests and we can have a hypothesis which we want to test in those particular asset groups in order to scale and improve that account. So being able to see asset group level performance is really crucial. And in my opinion, I think Performance Max is going to come out of asset group performance in the near future, similar to how they have ad group performance. Why wouldn't PMAX have asset group performance? But yeah, that's just my prediction. Okay, so step one, we want to review the asset group level to see how they're doing individually. Step two, we want to go to the Insights tab. So the Insights tab is really good for expanding on your keywords and your audiences for your Performance Max campaigns. So when you start a brand new Performance Max campaigns, you include your keywords in your custom segments, I think, maybe, yeah, custom segments. Um, based on your just your thoughts and your hypothesis, but the insights tab tells you exactly the keywords that people have been using to find your products and click on your ads via your Pmax. Now this is really good to expand on your Pmax keywords you're you're using in your custom segments, but it's also really good to expand on your normal regular search campaigns because it provides a really good insight into the sort of keywords people are using, much better than search terms in my opinion. So that's the first one. We're going to use the Insights tab to discover new keywords. And then the step three and the final one, we're going to use the Insights tab again to, to discover new audiences, to put in our in-market and affinity audiences at the bottom of our audience signal. And that's it. That's all That's all I do. And I've seen really good success with this. Uh, you don't need to overcomplicate it. I may reveal a video in the future of how I've improved this or progressed this optimization, but that's really it, okay? And from this, so these two steps are the most crucial ones. When we're discovering new keywords and populating our campaigns, we want to go through and take away keywords that haven't been showing up or haven't been uh, shown up in our Insights tab, really. And the same for audiences. We want to purge the, the audiences and keywords that aren't showing up in our reports, and we want to include more of the keywords that are showing up. It's basic optimization 101. Okay, so let's go and show you this in an account. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the Google script so we can look at the asset group level performance. So this is a script and I will link it in description. I didn't create this. Someone else, someone other marketer did. I can't take any credit for it at all, but it's really good and I recommend it. So I'll link it in the description. So what we get when we add this Google script into our account is a load of data. So we can see the total cost and the total conversions and the conversion value across uh, shopping, video display and search so we know where our money is going uh, that's one really good thing and the next thing which is really good in this tab here is the asset groups so when we're in this level we can see each of the asset groups from our campaigns so this is one campaign here we can see the impressions conversions the conversion value the ROAS which is the most important our clicks CTR and CPA Okay, so this is really good to review the performance of your asset group because you can run tests and you can expand on your asset groups and see how that performs based on your hypothesis and based on the optimizations you do in step two and three. So that's number one of how you can see it. If you don't have that Google script or don't want to put it in, there is another way. When you have your PMAX campaign selected, what you want to do is go to listing groups here. And when you're at the top here, uh, bearing in mind this is, what's this duration for? So let's just do last 30 days. Okay, what we can do here is at the top bit here where it's all products, we can see our, our um, asset groups from this PMAX campaign here. And we can also see the impressions, the clicks, the cost, the average CPC. Actually, I want to add a, add a different column in there. That's a bit better. 
So impressions, clicks, cost, conversion value divided by cost, which is ROAS, cost per conversion, CPC. So this gives us some data as well. So we can see the performance of each asset group from this level as well. I can see this one doing really well at 7.45. Uh, this one at 3.42, this one at 8.65. Bear in mind, you always want to reference the cost, how much it's spent to get that. Um, and then this one's struggling a bit at 2.48. So I want to maybe think about this one. And I have this blurred out here because I need to protect my client's data. But this is a catch-all campaign. So what, what I've heard quite a lot of people saying is they love to have a catch-all campaigns. I'm less so uh, pros of using catch-all campaigns. I prefer to be more specific with my asset groups because when you can be more specific with the products you have in there, you can be more specific with the audience as in the data you use from your previous purchases of that specific product, your keywords, and then your ad copy in your videos. It's just all about being specific and it's just message match 101 for Google ads. But why would you not do in your performance max campaign? I don't understand it quite. And yeah, this is showing to me catch all hasn't been performing well, but the more specific asset groups have been doing well. Okay, um, so that's there. So we can look at the asset group level performance there. The next thing we're gonna do is just go to the left hand side here. We're gonna go to insights. And on this insights tab here, this is really good. I recommend going to the last 28 days just for comparison. And what we want to do, first of all, so this stage here, we want to discover new keywords. So let's go to here. And when you scroll down your insights tab, you come you come to the section saying consumer spotlights. And on this bit, what we can do here is filter by certain values. So we can do conversion value, we can do search volume, and we can add in a few others here. I just do conversion value and I stick to the same. Oh. An alarm going off, and what we can do here is see the search categories we are gaining, and which is which is uh, giving us the highest level of conversion value. So from this, it gives us a search category group. But if we expand on this, what we can do here is look at the individual keywords that have gained the most conversion value. So what I would do here is basically go through, copy and paste this within reason. You'll have to do it individually, and add those into the custom segments in your audience signals for the specific asset group or the most relevant asset group. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do with that. Expand on our keywords there. And if we scroll down further slightly, we go to audience insights. And what this shows to us is the audiences that are showing up and gaining us the share of the clicks here um, and just performing well within our campaign. So what I'm gonna do here, we have the option to filter by share of clicks or index. I do index first, but I also go through share of clicks. And if you want to see the difference, what this says here is index is the share of your clicks coming from an audience segment divided by the general population from the audience segment. So basically, the higher the index number, the more relevant it is and working well in your campaign. So what we can do here, we can already see these audiences here uh, have a green thing that says optimize. I'm probably not showing that. Um, but what this shows to me is I have all of the audience signals, all of the audience segments, sorry, that I should have in this campaign. And if one of these is not showing up for optimizer, or if I don't have it in my campaign, then I will go through and add it into that audience signal for that asset group. Okay. And that's really it, guys. I don't do much other than that, okay? With my uh, performance match campaigns, as I've touched on previously, I like to be specific with my uh, asset groups because I like to show a specific amount of products so I can be more specific with my ad copy, more specific with my videos, more specific with my images. And I just feel that's just more appropriate for Google Ads than a more of a catch-all sort of basis. But that's my style, everyone is different and there's no two ways of getting to from A to B within marketing. It's all about style. Okay, so that's it from me, guys. Um, if you want to connect with me to talk about this more in more detail, then please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll reply to your messages and I want to grow my following and connect with you guys and speak to you. So please, please do that. I encourage it. Um, and yeah, it'd be great. Right. Thank you for that one, guys. I'll see you in the next.